Welcome to Tough Questions, where we address the most challenging issues of a real and a relative Christian faith. If you're joining us on Facebook Live or our YouTube channel, Instagram, or maybe the Tough Questions podcast, again, I want to say thanks for dialing in. Now let's get into our subject for this episode. Well, again, I want to say thanks for joining me this morning. On a Sunday morning, you could be anywhere doing any kind of stuff, but instead, you're here with me, and I appreciate that. So today we're going to start a new series, uh, a series that um, I, I hope will be one that will help each one of us to grow in our walk of faith uh, as we look at some of the the different things that the New Testament especially uh, has been trying to get across to people, things that Jesus is teaching in the New Testament uh, about what it means to be in a relationship with God. You know, and ultimately that is the bottom line, right? Is that we would be in a, in a loving and an intimate and a saving relationship with who Jesus is. Remember those words? You've probably heard these either in your own uh, life or somewhere you've heard, for better or for worse, well, in sickness and in health. You know, one of the things that the Bible does is it teaches us that our relationship with Jesus is, and our relationship with God is really like almost like a wedding where Jesus would be the groom and the church or you and I that make up the church would be the bride of Christ. Uh, it's it's kind of in a in a loving and a sacrificial relationship, one where there's you know we have to accept things when you come into a relationship like a marriage. You know, I don't know anybody that that marries another person and they just love every aspect about that individual. Well, you know, most of the time there's a little bit of compromise going on there. Was you know we have our good side and we have our negative side. We all do. That's just life. But with Christ and the church, as we come before him and say, I want to be a member, I want to be a follower of Jesus, I want all that you have planned for me, he says, that's great because I want to enter into this intimate type of a relationship with you, one that really I think would be uh, kind of parallel to being married, you know, as a, in the human world here, in, the hum in a human relationship way. But when we come into that type of a relationship with Christ, you know, that intimacy, that, that marriage type of relationship, we have to accept Jesus for who he is. We have to accept Jesus on his terms, not our terms. And we have to go to the cross and pick it up uh, in order to be in a relationship with Jesus. You know, let me, let me, ref let me, tell you where that comes from uh, later on take a look at the the bible in uh, the new testament uh, matthew and look at chapter 16 and jesus says there he says to his disciples he says whoever wants to be my disciple has to deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me now friends I, i'm telling you this is the hardest thing you'll ever do in life you know, the cross of Jesus is one of the most difficult places to be, to pick up our, you know, cross, our emotional, physical, spiritual cross, and follow Jesus. You know, cross referring to the many different things that we'll experience as a Christ follower. Because being a Christ follower is demanding, and it's harsh, and it's very costly I was having a conversation with Leah last night about this, and she said, well, what do you mean costly? And what I'm referring to there is that we have to give up maybe our own plans or some of our own desires or our own understanding of things or maybe even some of our own goals in order to be a part of what God is doing. He says, trust me enough to give up you know, your control of your life and let me control it. Yes, that's a very costly thing to do. You know, 
And I've mentioned before that if you think that the Christian walk or the Christian life is just going to be this rose garden type of a thing, then you need to reassess where you're at because the Christian walk is a very difficult place to be you know, because we're, we're called to be, to be a certain way. We're called to, to trust in God and not just on ourselves. We're called to fulfill the plans that God has for us in the world. I mean, he has a, a place and a job and a, and a calling for each person that comes to him. You know, I've my calling is weird. I never thought I would be a pastor. Um, I have uh, people that I'm mentoring in Pakistan. I have people I'm mentoring in uh, the Philippines and in Zambia, Central Africa. I never in my wildest dreams thought that I would be a pastor, much less mentoring other people in their ministries over there. So you never know what's going to take place you know, as when you pick up your cross and you follow Jesus, just be prepared. But re remember that he will give us the, the strength and, you know, the fortitude and all the things that we, that we need in order to accomplish his will. But it's still going to cost us our calendar, our money, our property, our business, our retirement, our families, your possessions, your heart, your will, your goals and desires, your talents, accomplishments, 24-7, just basically everything has to be at the disposal of Christ. That's what it means to be a follower. That's what it means to pick up my cross and follow him. Well, that cross might be, you know, partly doing his will and not my own will. Part of that cross might be in my calendar, you know, where there's times that I need to not do the things that I want to do, and instead I'm doing the things that God has called me to do. See, there's, there's many different ways um, that we uh, can relate to what it means to pick up our cross and, and follow him. <clears throat> Remember that a, a cross, in the, in the days that Jesus spoke this to the disciples and all, the cross was a Roman instrument of torture. Uh, it was uh, an instrument designed to torture a person for a long period of time, uh, to, to just experience horrific pain and suffering, uh, humiliation, as most of the time people were, were placed on the side of a road and they were crucified naked. And it was humiliating, it was painful, it was, it was a horrific thing to do or to go through. And when Jesus told his followers, he says, you know, if you want to follow me, then you got to pick up your cross and follow me. Oh, they knew exactly what he was talking about. And the difficulties and the problems that would be associated with being a follower, that they were somehow like um, picking up a real, you know, a real Roman cross and following him <clears throat> excuse me you know for for each of us as we as we become a christ follower you got to answer the question do i really want to because like like things in life you know we're faced with choices and and decisions all the time and we have to make the choice of whether or not i really want to and is it worth it is it worth being a follower of Jesus. Now, a lot of times in the world, we, we think about, well, you know, as a follower of Jesus, I can call upon him when, when, you know, grandma's sick and in the hospital or, you know, the cancer diagnosis is not what we wanted to hear or, you know, we have a, a friend or a child or a loved one that's, that's lost or emotionally struggling or, or something of that nature. We, we think that following Jesus, we can call upon Jesus to work his miracles and heal everybody. That's not always the way it goes. It does happen sometimes, but in more cases than none, we, we don't see God fulfilling our request to heal somebody or to, to grant somebody something in particular. Most of the time, we simply retain or we receive the strength to go through it in faith and in trust that God is doing something good, again, for those that love him. So being a follower of Jesus doesn't mean that Jesus is like the genie in the lamp 
And whenever I run into problems, I rub the lamp and, you know, I get this wish. That's not what it means at all. You know, we are very, what do I want to say? We are very intelligent people, very intelligent beings. We're creative. Uh, we can do things. We can create things. We have uh, all kinds of, of aspects of technology that we excel at and and these things can be things that sometimes get in our way. You know, certainly this kind of shows that as human beings, we are very intelligent and very capable. And sometimes that's one of the things that keeps us away from, from seeing that following Christ is worth it. You know, when I give up my own will, when I give up my own plans sometimes or my own, uh, you know, future that I, that I think I'm carving out for myself. You know, when I look at accomplishments and the things that we can do like that, I can also see how it distracts me from my relationship with God, from the relationship I have with Christ in this wedding type of an intimate relationship. And sometimes because of that, you know, how great I am, you know, we question, do I really need God? Do I really need to come before God and sacrifice the things that are required? Well, you got to ask the question, do I really want to be a follower of Jesus? And then the second question, of course, is, am I willing to deny myself? Am I willing to pay the, the price? Am I, as a follower of Jesus, am I willing to do whatever it takes to put up with or to accept whatever it's going to cost me? in order to be a follower of Christ. Because I have to deny my will over God's will. I have to get past things like pride because I can make robots and I can accomplish all kinds of wondrous things. Do I really need God? That's, that's partly pride. You know, and, and that affects our free will choice, which it has to be a free will choice to follow Jesus. And, you know, we have to follow and take up our cross, which, of course, means that whatever obstacles are in the way to fulfilling the call that God has on our life, we have to be willing to pass by those, those things that we might have planned in order to fulfill the plan and the will of God in our life. So I want you to just think about that a little bit today and throughout this week, and that is... Do I really want to be a follower? And number two, I know it's going to cost me something. Am I willing to give up the things that God is calling me to do? Now, you might not know what those are on the day that you make the commitment to be a follower. I, I still don't know. I mean, I've given up things in my life, you know, in order to follow Christ. But I don't know what God's going to ask of me tomorrow. So that's part of the second question is, is it worth it? And am I willing to continue on that journey? Friends, thanks for joining me. And I'll encourage you to invite somebody new next week. Thanks and God bless. Tough Questions for God is a teaching ministry of the Rosebush United Methodist Church, where we challenge our faith with some of the most difficult issues. Tough Questions for God is available on Facebook Live Sundays at 11.30 a.m. or go on our website at toughquestionsforgod.org and just follow the links on the homepage for YouTube or via podcast. Thanks for joining and don't forget to like and share. God bless.